Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go through the release notes for the Divinity X Impera 1.28 open beta release. This was released on the 29th of July 2021, if you're watching this in the future. Now, this is going to be very much a, a highlights um, video with me passing comments on based on the text. There will be no gameplay simply because I, I just don't like using the beta uh, updates because that always opposes a risk to my current let's play of which at the moment is Epirus and what I will do as we go through I would explain the risks and possible impact on that series and if you are following the channel and watching the Epirus series of course because this update has now reached the beta stage that means that the Epirus campaign now has effectively got a shortening shelf life because there's a risk that what will happen is when this update hits the stable branch then there could be consequences on that campaign. Um, now, before we get started, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Dresden and the team for bringing these updates because that's what keeps this mod active and relevant, even this ever-changing game world that we live in. And I think what we can do now is just go down and it says here, patch notes overview, not full. There's a link up here if you're interested in the full patch notes. I've taken a look at them, but what this does is cover the, the key highlights of the update. And we'll start, it says battle performance changes, stamina ability for units has been removed. They were not functioning properly. And there's of course a battle lag. Due to these changes, battle lag should be significantly improved, especially with lower end systems. Big thanks to Benjamin for their uh in future we may have to put them back now i must admit i've never used the stamina abilities in in any campaign i've ever played i've never really thought them relevant to uh actually fighting in a battle but i do like the idea that we're going to get some improved performance from dropping it now moving down to what is what you could say is one of the primary focuses of this update it says Greek colony overhauls, Massilla, Colchis, and Bosphorus have had their rosters changed and updated. These three factions now have special colony barracks buildings and types that have unique features and functions such as the local uh, versus Greek units, cultural diplomacy effects. Colchis is now a Caucasian and has Caucasian template, new campaign only, new faction trait, colony population text in the military training tree. So that, that sounds interesting. Current campaigns of this faction may have some issues due to in with incorrect building types. This is what I was saying, although I'm not fighting a one of the Greek colonies, although, although that will most likely be my next series. Now, if any of you are not sure what this actually means, is that Cam has made a video explaining it in a bit more detail. But the, the basic structure is that the Greek colonies now have effectively two rosters because of their mixed cultural background what you will have that so when you play one of these factions you will have to choose between whether you use the local units which will be triggered by certain uh cover which building it is now it doesn't specify here or whether you stay true to the greek units so you're so what that means is say for example in the bosphorian kingdom is that if you get stay with the local units, you re retain access to the very powerful horse archers. If you go down the Greek line, you will get stronger infantry, but you will not get such strong uh, uh, horse archers. So there's a so when playing the Greek colonies, there will be a definite decision over which direction you want to go. Now, if we move down, it says other new units: new Bat Nabatian camel unit, new Athenian Pelset unit, new Iberian reform unit, new Saba heavy infantry, and new Kartuli heavy swordsman hang on the cartoon have already got a big enough roster as it is well given the more powerful units there's new barbarian ai roster units added 90 new ai to only grand campaign units for various germanic gallic and selbetian thracian and british ai functions from ritter floor create more units for various rosters these will replace and augment existing rosters based on tribe the goal is to add more variety and unique units to various factions a player may face that could be interesting because i must admit the the barbarian rosters i've been fighting recently tend to be pretty uniform it'd be nice to see if whether they actually actually have some cavalry units because the really big um, barbarian infantry armies are quite easy to destroy there's british units and gen generals visual updates added a new and greater variation for many units and updated their appearance this includes older shared units officers standard bearers and faction exclusive units British general updated with new visuals and proper political outfits when they're not leading troops. 
Big thanks. Yeah. Okay. So moving on, it says area of recruitment changes. Various higher tier AOR units have been moved to the immigration and foreign quarter line of buildings in many regions. These units are now require either tier two or two three of the immigration buildings to be recruited depending on the unit quality. Depending on the culture, some of these units may still be available in the main city line because the culture cannot build immigration buildings of its own cultural type. Remove copy units of Galatia, AOR, Levies, Swords, Cavalry. These units are now available in the traditional Galatia area only. Oh, this could be interesting because it's going to change the way you, you could build up settlements. Now, I'm not sure what the immigration foreign culture buildings are. These are the buildings I must admit I, I, I very rarely ever use because what they are is they, they are specialist buildings which allow you to increase the, the culture of, of a region you've occupied, but it has a downside in the sense that it adds uh, the, the original culture so in some ways, it works similar to the Egyptian campaign where you've got the Egyptian culture and the Hellenic culture. So that means that if you want to get to the better tier two and tier three AOR units, you're going to have to consciously build these um, buildings. Now, that could have implications for some of my favorite units like the crossbows in Sicily and the heavy archers and elephant units in Syria, because I like to recruit those units. But if they're locked behind immigration buildings, you're going to have to ask some pretty fundamental questions about whether it's going to be worth the risk of building these buildings and the cultural impact just to get those specialist AOR units. That could be quite interesting. So moving down, resource changes and new campaigns only. It says iron has been moved from Sicily to Corsica and fish from Corsica to Sicily. Well, this could be interesting because um, the availability of iron, which gives you armor or, armor or weapons upgrades in Sicily, normally makes it a prime target. Uh, but if it's in Corsica, that means you're going to have to try and get out in Corsica and grab it. The fish in Sicily could be useful because it could increase the strength of the economy, could have an impact on your how you plan campaigns. Silver has been added to the Edlani city and olive oil has been moved inland. Hmm, I think that the presence of silver could be useful for increasing the value of that province. But I wonder why the olive oil has been moved inland, but I can't, I can't see that being that much of a product. Added new amber and spice main buildings rather than having the resources come from the region effect only. That could be interesting because that mean that we might be able to get amber and spice from certain cities rather than have, actually having a, a region effect. There's moved the amber resource in Germany to be on the coast with a port. So it doesn't say which port it would be. Region effects still produce one of each resource to allow saves to retain the feature. Save games will have amber production in different region resources. I think this has just been included to ensure stability with current Let's Plays. Carthage mercenary barracks now require silver rather than gold to upgrade. That could have implications. Depends on where the silver is, because that could really give you a bit of a problem with respect to being able to upgrade your mercenary barracks. Squalor changes. Squalor sanitation effects now begin at tier one for all cities and gradually increase to tier four. Mm, that could be interesting because I must admit at the moment you build a few fountains and you just can ignore squalor. But if the squalor increases with levels of uh, cities, that could have quite a, uh, a big impact on how you manage your squalor. And also that's one of these features that could have quite a a major impact on a an existing let's play the lower neg squalor and public order negative values on all tier four cities now i do like that because one of the annoying things that gets to me is the way that the squalor piles up when you really develop a province and there doesn't seem to be any way to mitigate it because it's it's a, it's a squalor public order as opposed to a sanitation problem it says slightly increase squalor sanitation in major sit from major cities. Remove random disaster plague events. Now this last one is very significant because this refers to the random uh, events where you your army suddenly goes down with plague for no reason whatsoever, and then it hangs around, and quite often you get the same army keeps getting bombarded with plague, and so effectively you end up getting an army severely damaged just because you can't escape it. I'm glad to see that's been removed. Population changes. Replace most uh, upkeep bonuses in 
military management technology tree with population bonuses interesting i'm not exactly sure what that will do because it's related research now to be honest I'm, I'm not exactly too sure what the those bonuses are in the military management tree so this pop, population system economic effects are now properly working this will have an impact on save game economies again this is one of the reasons why i'm saying that when the 1.28 update drops into the stable branch this could is the type of change that could completely wreck the economy so what you can have is a very strong economy that's making piles and piles of cash that kicks in and what will happen is that your economy or your population could have problems so that's something you do need to consider when when one of these updates drops so this new victory conditions revised all victory conditions to be generally shorter and more consistent and varied between the types of victories big thanks to q sir Glutonis for all the work in the new feature new campaigns only uh, i'll be honest i don't really pay much attention to the victory conditions because some of them just seem to always seem a little bit odd like you you've got a certain faction and you've got to go all the way across the map to get to a certain specific province to win a certain victory this mainly relates to the trade and the the uh the economic type victory conditions rather than the combat ones and then it says other changes various battle balancing changes lots of other changes both large and small check out the website patch notes this is referring to this here where there's a lot more kind of what you would call bug type fixes and minor tinkering with units but i'm not going to go into that in this video so i think that's about it and say a big thank you to the davidiette imperial team for bringing us another update i uh, hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming